Hello, today we're going to talk about tips on stoichiometry problems. Keep watching for those tips. So here's a few tips on how to solve moles to moles problem, liters to liters problem, or anything to anything problem. It has to be the same thing, like moles to moles or liters to liters. You can either use the want given method, which is this. Units is the want in the cloud right there. You put the units in the formula and you always keep it in the cloud because that's what you don't want to cancel out. And the given is always over one. And you just keep on adding brackets when you need more. But since it's the same thing to the same thing, you only need two. Or you can do ratios, which is just two fractions and you set them equal to each other and you cross multiply. It's easier in this situation, but you should probably use want given since you have to use want given for everything else. Now, we are going to talk about moles to liters or liters to atoms or atoms to moles or atoms to liters. Whatever combination possible you can think of with stoichiometry. Okay, so tip one, you can only use the want given method. Make sure to always put your want units and formula in a cloud so you make sure to not cancel them out. It is important to cancel all other units out besides the one in the cloud because that's the whole point because you need you want just the unit in the cloud that's why it's called the want given method and that's basically it and if you don't know how to multiply and divide fractions I highly suggest that you review that because that's all this is. It's just multiplying and dividing fractions. Because you basically just multiply all the way across the top, multiply all the way across the bottom, and you get just one fraction with just one bracket. And you divide that and you get the answer. That's basically all you do with stoichiometry problems, but it just has chemistry in it. It's algebra with signs. And that's basically all you do. Mickey the chemistry wizard and me again to give you the final tips on how to solve stoichiometry problems. Tip one, always, <laughs> always put the units and the formula that you want in the want cloud. If you do not do that and you accidentally cross it out, then you will have no units in the answer and you need the units in the answer. So, highly suggest using the cloud. Always cross out the units and formula of the stuff that you canceled out because you're basically just canceling out the units and then just multiplying with the numbers there. If you've had some previous knowledge of stoichiometry problems before seeing this video. And always make sure that the equation or problem that they use is balanced. Because if it is not balanced, the answer that you will get is wrong because you're not using the right equation in the first place. And don't like, always make sure that you use significant figures in your final answer. So, the given is what you use. You count the significant figures in the given number, and that's how many significant figures that you need in the final answer. Like, for example, if your given number is 100 grams of O2, then your final answer can only have one significant figure since there's only one significant figure in 100 grams of O2. Okay. And don't forget to use scientific notation when you use scientific notation. For example, when you use the atoms is always atoms particles is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. You can't forget the times 10 to the 23rd power because that is important 
You can forget about it and leave it to the end, but when you get to the end, make sure that you apply it. And if there is another thing that has scientific notation, you have to add that 10 to the whatever power to the 10 to the 23rd power that you use. And if you don't know how to do that, I suggest you review or ask your chemistry teacher or your math teacher on how to do that because you need to know how to do that to solve those kind of problems. Okay. And if you suck at math, I suggest you review and that you use a calculator <laughs> because if you don't use, if you suck at math, Calculator always helps. My calculator is my best friend because sometimes I do suck at math and sometimes I forget stuff because it happens to everyone. You forget stuff. I, I get it. But if you don't know most of the stuff that I'm talking about because you don't know, then I highly suggest you review, like look in your textbook and then come to this for tips, like small little tips and small little reminders on how to solve the problem. So this is just little tips. Okay. Oh, and another thing, when you read the problem, underline what you want to find and so that you know what to put in the cloud and underline the given and you put that under want. So yeah. So I hope you found this somewhat useful, my tips. And if you don't, then I obviously did not do my job with this, but these were just a few tips that I always remember myself when I'm doing stoic problems. And hopefully you find these useful and come back to my channel if you need any other help. Or if you just want to have some fun, because I will post some other videos. But until then, comment if you have any questions. Get back to you. Comment any stoic questions, any math questions. I will help you. And I will be there to support. And you can always go to our Tumblr page and leave asks there. And we will get back to you on any questions. Thank you very much.